Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, this week's project is going to be making a crosscut sled for the table saw. That's the one project I get asked a lot about. A lot of people ask me if I'll make a video on how to make a crosscut sled. Well, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube about making crosscut sleds for your table saw. This is just going to be my take. Now, currently for my setup, I have three different crosscut sleds. One is my miter sled. I use this for cutting all of my picture frame parts. The other one is my zero clearance 45 degree sled and this is for cutting 45 degree angles on panels and boards. And the third one is the one that you guys see in my videos all the time and it's actually my dedicated dado sled but I use it as my go-to all around cross cutting sled. The one thing that's missing from these three sleds is a dedicated 90 degree zero clearance sled and that's the one that we're going to be making. Now note that all three of the sleds are constructed the same. The only thing that's different about them are their different features. This one has two cross pieces at 45 degree angle for cutting those miter cuts. This particular sled just has a 45 degree angle kerf in there for making those perfect 45 degree angle cuts. And this one here has a 3 quarter inch wide kerf in there that will accommodate my dado saw's maximum distance. So now that we know that all the sleds are made the same, it's just the different features that make them different, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the basics. Now, the one thing that I have to keep in mind when I'm making my table saw sleds is that my bases on my particular sleds need to be three quarters of an inch thick. And I'll explain to you why. Now, as I just said, my sleds and my jigs, my bases need to be three quarters of an inch thick. And the reason for that is this feature right here. This is my add-on uh, and it's a slide out support arm. It has two sets of rollers. And that's the one thing I have to keep in mind because when I pull this out to support long boards when I'm going cross cutting on my sled, these rollers have to be in line with the base of that sled to keep everything nice and flush and supported. So now that's the only reason why my base is three quarters of an inch thick. But you can use any thickness base that you want I would recommend no less than a half inch thick, but that's up to you. Okay, when it comes to making the jig, uh, the material used is up to you. Um, normally I use three quarter inch plywood to make my bases and my, my sleds out of, but I don't have any on hand, but I do have this piece of three quarter inch MDF, which is perfect. It's the perfect size, it's nice and flat. All I have to do is make sure everything's squared up and everything uh, before I get started with it. Now, when it comes to the runners, uh, you got a lot of choices out there. You can buy factory runners uh, that fit in your miter slots. You can use, I've heard of people using that um, cutting board plastic. You can use hardwood. Uh, you can use plywood or whatever you want that will fit into your miter slots with a nice perfect fit. Now, a lot of times uh, you'll hear some people say don't use softwood. That's mostly true. Uh, you really don't because it doesn't take that much of a beating. However, because I have uh, so many different sleds with the runners being just this simple select pine, which is like a fir, uh, I've never had any problem and I don't have any play in it because this three quarter inch fir is a perfect fit for my miter slot. There's absolutely no play in it whatsoever. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is cut down to thin strips. And for me, it lasts a long time. I've never had anything loosen up on me. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use just what I have on hand, the scrap. So now all I need to do is go ahead and cut a couple of thin strips off of this uh, piece of pine that I have here for my runners and get ready to glue them on the base. And basically, we're going to build this base, well, from the base up. <laughs> all right, so now to go ahead and cut a couple of uh, runners out of this board, I'm going to use a thin strip rip jig that I saw from Charles Neal and thank you for this Charles because it works like a champ and uh, I'm going to get a little closer and show you what this is guys uh, and it's really simple to make and it works great so let's take a look. So for my version of the thin strip rip jig uh, is simply just a piece of MDF with a slot cut in it and I made the slot on the drill press by drilling a series of holes and then cleaning it up with a um, chisel just so my bolt can slide nicely back and forth in here. Speaking of bolt, what I have is a furniture bolt. Uh, it has one of those big fat heads on it. And then I have a washer here where the sides are cut off. Now my slots, my miter slots on my saw are almost like a T-track. They got a little groove down in the bottom there that acts like a T-track. 
So with this washer and a bolt, I can slip it into this miter slot here and it's locked in, it's not going anywhere. So now I can go ahead and take my long strip of MDF, another washer, and I've got just a quarter inch wing nut here, kind of lock things down. What I'm gonna do now, bring my blade up and I'm going to bring this over. I've got a little bit of it hanging off the blade and part of it on the blade, but I'm going to bring it over to the blade and basically zero it out. Temporarily lock it down for a second. That way I can bring my fence and my material over to it. Get everything nice and touching. Lock my fence down. So now with my fence locked down, everything is zeroed out as far as my fence and my board. It's zeroed out with the left side of the blade. Now I can take my jig, slide it back in front of the blade. You don't want it beside the blade. You want it in front of it or else you'll have binding and problems. So now I'm clear of the blade. I'm in front of it. I can go ahead and put my stock back here. Still zero it out because I haven't moved my fence. I can bring my jig over to my stock. And I want my strips to be a little less than 3 eighths of an inch because my miter slots are three-eighths of an inch deep and I can go ahead and lock that into place. So now, I just bring my stock over, lock down my fence and I can go ahead and make my rip cut. Now with that first rip made, I can go ahead and bring my stock back over to the jig again and make my second rip cut. So now what I'm end up with is two perfectly flush <laughs> strips. I mean the jig works perfectly. Again, thank you Charles Neal. <laughs> it's quick and simple and it works perfectly. And man, that is just, I can't ask for a better fit than that. The only thing I need to do now is get them in both slots and I, of course I have them extra long here because I flush cut them down to the jig, uh, to the sled when everything is all said and done. Alright, the next step is to make sure that your fence is running parallel to one of your miter slots. Uh, you can do that by taking your fence and sliding it over to the edge of your miter slot, lock it down. Make sure everything is nice and flush in there and that it's running perfectly parallel with it. Alright, so with that in. Alright, so now that we know that the fence is parallel to the miter slot, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get ready to glue the runners onto the base. And since my runners are thinner than my miter slot and they sit below it, which is what I want, I'm going to take a couple of quarter inch nuts place them inside the miter slot to raise those runners up. Alright, so now with the runners in the miter slot sitting on top of those nuts, I can go ahead and place my fence so that the center of my base is about centered over the uh, blade alright I don't use a lot of glue because I ended up reinforcing it with some pin nails or screws and that's another thing you don't have to glue your runners on you can screw them on in case you want to change them later. And how you would do that is basically get them inside your slot, put your piece on against the fence like we're about to do in this next step, slide everything out a little bit, countersink and, and drill your pre -drill your screw holes, get your first screws in, slide it out, get your second screws in, so on and so forth. You can absolutely do that, it's not a problem. I go ahead and glue mine on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and butt my side up against the fence, get it where I want it, keeping firm pressure up against the fence as I come down, 
Make sure everything stays nice and parallel. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take a couple of shock clamps and clamp it down. Okay guys, with the runners glued into place, uh, what you didn't see was just a few minutes ago, I just took my pin nailer and put four pin nails in each side just to kind of additional security. Um, now what I'm going to do, one of the things I like to do is I'm going to take some paste wax and just wax my runner boards. I'll let that sit up and then I'll buff it off. Um, one of the things that I want to talk to you about is some of the features of my other sleds that I really like that I want to incorporate into this new sled. On the main sled that you always see me using, a couple of things that I have here are handles, and it's just a dowel um, with the back braces that keep everything kind of at 90 degrees and square, keep my fence square. I've got a dowel running in between them, and it's just a great place for to keep uh, uh, my hands and everything, so I always know that they're not near the blade. Another thing that I do is on the back side here, which we're going to do on the new one, is on the two blocks that hold the dowels on the inside here, I've got them covered with a quarter inch piece of plywood and that covering is like a blade guard on the back side so I always know that you know I won't go too far and I won't, my hands won't ever be in the way. They're always some place for them to be. So I want to incorporate these handles on the new sled as well. Another thing on this sled is if you notice, the fence extends past the sled and I really like that because I have a stop block in here that slides back and forth and my stop box is a little flip stop block and all that is is just a spring hinge and everything on the stop block uh, that's cut in half and it allows me to flip it up when I don't need it. <clears throat> that way I can always keep my setting and everything. Well I like that so I want to make sure that I have a place for my stop block to go and I also like the fact that the fence extends past the sled one of the things that I've learned when using this sled is I've always wished that my fence extended just a little bit further so I could have a little bit more room for the stop block to go down for other cuts and everything so I want to make sure that the fence on this new one is a bit longer uh, so I'm going to make sure that I incorporate that in. Now speaking of the fence, uh, a good way to make a fence and everything is to take uh, a couple of sheets of three quarter inch plywood, a couple of strips of three quarter inch plywood, glue them together to get yourself an inch and a half thick fence, you know, something nice and sturdy. Well, for me, I happen to have this uh, glue up laying around that I was making something uh, and I used two pieces of this three quarter inch pine and I glued them together to make an inch and a half piece. I think I was going to cut some kind of legs or something out of it and I ultimately never ended up using this. Well it's the perfect application for this fence right now because one I've got some length on it and two it's the right thickness it's an inch and a half thick. So what all I need to do is figure out how long do I want my fence, how long do I want to extend it and go ahead and cut it down to that length. And then I'm going to cut a groove, the full length of this, uh, to for. In this sense, I would, you know, you can use T-track if you want, but I'm going to make my own T-track. I'm going to cut a groove in here. Uh, then I'm going to laminate the top of this with a quarter-inch sheet of plywood, and then I'm going to cut a smaller groove in that plywood, just enough for my quarter-inch bolt, T-bolt, to go through. And I'm going to make a little T-slot in there for my stop block. Alright, now that I got the fence cut down to the length that I want, I'm going to go ahead and take and run it through and cut a half inch groove in it, uh, probably about a quarter inch deep. And it's going to be one inch down from the top of the fence. 
And what this is going to be for is for my T-bolt to slide into for my stop lock. Okay, with that groove cut in there, my T-bolt fits nicely and it slides and it won't turn so I'll be able to lock it down. So that's good for that. Now what I need to do is go ahead and switch this dado blade out for my regular blade and I'm going to cut down a quarter inch sheet of this plywood that I have over here. I'm going to go ahead and cut a rip down that's wide as my fence so I can go ahead and laminate that on and then when that's glued on, we'll go ahead and cut a thin strip down it that is thick enough for the shaft of this T-bolt to fit into it. It'll create sort of a T-track in there. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> 